Omagyan timidandas yagina jana salakaya chaksu un militam nena tasmai shri guru vena maha. Ma um vishnu badai krishna prastai bhutale shimakti bhakti vedanta swami tinamane. Namaste, sir Smati Devi Gauravani Pacharine Nirasisa Sunya Vadi Paschatya De Satayane. Vansha Kalapata Rupas Chakri Pasindu Pava Chakra Titanam Bhavade Vyo Vaishnava Vyo Mahama Maha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhuna Tiranda. Sri Advaita Gadada Harsivasa Vidor Bhaktivindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, 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 Hari Hari. So today we're uh, honoring one of the principal personalities within the Panchatattva. Of course, they're all principal, but this is Sri Advaita Acharya. He is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, manifesting himself as a devotee of Lord Chaitanya. And so we'll read from one verse from the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Adi Leela, chapter 6, which that entire chapter is devoted to Advaita Acharya. And this is verse number 12. Jagana Jaga Mandala Advaita Mangala Guna Dhamma Mangala Charitra Sada Mangala Yandra Dhamma. Being the reservoir of all auspicious attributes, Sri Advaita Charya is all auspicious for the world. Its characteristics, activities, and name are all auspicious. Srila Prabhupada's purport. Sri Advaita Charya, who is an incarnation of Mahavishnu, is an Acharya, a teacher. All his activities and all the other activities of Vishnu are auspicious. Anyone who can view the all auspiciousness in the pastimes of Lord Vishnu also becomes auspicious simultaneously. Therefore, since Lord Vishnu is the fountainhead of auspiciousness, anyone who is attracted by the devotional service of Lord Vishnu can render the greatest service to human society. Rejected persons of the material world who refuse to understand pure devotional service as the eternal function of the living entities and as the actual liberation of the living being from conditional life become bereft of all devotional service because of their poor fund of knowledge. In the teachings of Advaita Prabhu, there is no question of fruit of activity or impersonal liberation. Bewildered by the spell of the material energy, however, Persons who could not understand that Advaita Prabhu is non-different than Vishnu wanted to follow him with their impersonal conceptions. The attempt of Advaita to punish them is also auspicious. Lord Vishnu and his activities can bestow all good fortune directly or indirectly. In other words, being favored by Lord Vishnu and being punished by Lord Vishnu are one and the same because all the activities of Vishnu are absolute. According to some, Mangala was another name of Advaita Prabhu. As the causal incarnation of Lord Vishnu, incarnation of a, for a particular occasion, he is simply, he is the supply agent or ingredient in material nature. However, he is never to be considered material. All his activities are spiritual. Anyone who hears about it and glorifies him becomes glorified himself for such activities free one from all kinds of misfortune. One should not invest any material contamination or impersonalness in, in the Vishnu form. Everyone should try to understand the real identity of Lord Vishnu for by such knowledge one can attain the highest stage of perfection. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So here, one thing, don't go bouncing around, just leave it the way it was. <laughs> Keep it where it was. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll tell you, I'll tell you when to move it because I need the purport for the presentation. Thank you, Karmanesh, thank you. 
Mangla, uh, here it says, all his activities are spiritual. He is the supply agent or ingredient in material nature. So this is a very, uh, when we say hard to understand principle, what does it mean supply agent or ingredient in the material nature? Well, we hear from the Srimad Bhagavatam and also in places throughout other scriptures, particular Chaitanya Charitamrita, that um, Mahavishnu is the expansion of the Lord who brings about the material creation. It's understood that the Lord expands himself into different forms of himself in order to perform his activities and to facilitate uh, others to perform activities within the realm of the spiritual world. But here, one of the expansions of the Lord, although he comes, he is initiating the material energy, he is not material. Some people think that when God touches the material energy, he takes on that, that same energy and functions within it. But this is also a, just some speculation, which is completely contrary to the actual principle that the Lord creates the material energy through his different energies, but never touches the material energy. So Mahavishnu is actually, I mean, Dvaita Charya is the supply ingredient for supply agent to, for the ingredients of the material energy. So this is one of the specific characteristics of Mahavishnu. So as is explained, he is not only Mahavishnu, but he has another energy within him and he manifests those both energies simultaneously and that is Sada Shiva. Shiva comes in the form of his original manifestation in this particular form of the Dwaita Acharya. There's a Shiva in every universe, but there is the original Shiva who has his planet in the spiritual world, who takes on the service of assisting a Dwaita Acharya, or Swiss, I'm, I'm sorry, assisting Mahavishnu in bringing about the uh, material energy. So just to give you a little uh, uh, knowledge of what's happening, it's called spiritual sex, actually. Uh, and it is explained like this, that the Lord creates the basic ingredients for the material energy. And uh, those ingredients remain in the dormant stage. And in those, in that dormant stage, nothing is happening. It's just there. It's called pradhan. Pradhan means aggregate of all the ingredients that make up the material energy, which are eight. Earth, water, fire, air, mind, intelligence, and false ego. Ether also. So these eight N -N ingredients are there in an aggregate state. In other words, they're not moving, they're dormant. But it's not those elements themselves, it's the ingredients that make up these elements. So that requires even a finer understanding of the energy. That's why it says the Lord is the creator of the, spirit, of the material world because it's not that he does the work of creation directly, but he supplies the ingredients for the material energy. And then how that, uh, how that unfolds is explained where Mahavishnu, he glances in the direction of the material energy in its aggregate state. That glance is a golden halo, halo, it's, it's described like that. But that grand glance comprises three elements in it. 
It is the time factor, the living entities, and the manifestation of that glance is Sadashiva. So Sadashiva takes the part to assist the Lord in bringing about the creation. Now, the glance does not go directly to Pradhan. He gives it to his wife, uh, Rama, uh, Ramadevi. Ramadevi is the concert in this particular manifestation of the Lord. And she carries that glance, which is made up of the living entities, the time factor, and Sadashiva. And she delivers it to the Pradhan. Once that Pradhan is activated by this golden halo, all the elements start to move and they start to form in different ways. And then, of course, Mahavishnu expands into Garbhodax like Vishnu. Garbhodax like Vishnu from the navel of Garbhodax like Vishnu comes the original Brahman, Lord Brahma, the original form of Brahma. And then his work is to put together all the forms of the living entities that make up the material world. In other words, the 8,400,000 forms where the living entities inhabit in their material sojourn. So that's how creation works. It's really quite detailed, interesting. And that's why also it says that Lord Shiva is called the father of, of all living entities because he actually assists in the process of creation. Um, here it mentions a little bit more about uh, Advaita Chari. He is also the Supreme Personality of Godhead, as we mentioned. He is a member of the Panchatattva. Panchatattva become Krishnam, Bhakta Rupa, Swarupakam, Bhakta Avatar, Bhakta Kyam, Namami Bhakti Shaktikam. So he's Bhakta Avatar. So he's an incarnation of the Lord's manifestation as the devotee energy. He's called Bhakta Avatar, or that's his particular feature. So this, this Panchatattva is the supreme absolute truth in five features of itself. The manifestation, the incarnation, the avatar, the Shakti energy, and the pure devotee. When people sometimes they say, at least certain class of personal uh, spiritualists say that God is one, or he is God is manifested as one, and he's impersonal. Prabhupada said, no, he's actually five, and he's personal. Five forms of that same one energy manifested for different functions. Now, in the material world, these devotees or these personalities take on the form of devotees in order to teach the process of pure devotional service to the living entities. And in order to do that, they act not as God, but as devotees. It mentions in another verse within the purport that if they, because Lord Nityananda, he's God. Lord Chaitanya, he's, he's the Supreme Lord. Advaita is also the Supreme Lord. Gadadhar is the Shakti energy of the Lord, the internal energy. And Srivas is the pure devotee manifestation of the Lord. Now, if they were to act in their capacity or in their position of the Lord, then the whole world would go topsy-turvy because everyone would, not everyone, but unscrupulous persons who want to present themselves as being the supreme would take the opportunity and use that to say, well, I am also God. <laughs> so that's why, that's one of the reasons why they presented themselves not as God, but as the devotee of God. And 
taught pure devotional service in the form of practicing that same service themselves. So that is Advaita Charya. We also understand that Advaita Charya preceded the appearance of Lord Chaitanya. Advaita Charya was, um, I'll give you a little background here. It says on the seventh day of the bright full moon, the Mag, uh, from the womb of Nabi Devi and his father, Kubera Pandit, both of them, uh, a beautiful Brahmin child was born. And uh, it mentions that he was he was given the name Mangala at the time, and later also he was known as Kamalaksa. And the residents of Navagram came to see the beautiful child. And uh, so this is how his appearance was on the seventh day of the bright full moon of month. Uh, Lord Chaitanya was born in 1486 or appeared in 1486. At that time, Advaita Acharya was 52 years old when the Lord had appeared. Before the advent of Lord Chaitanya in the area of Navadvi, which was a bastion of scholastic activity and some devotional activity, but mostly it was worship of the demigods, shaktas, smartas, ritualistic brahmins, uh, various types of spirituality that was more or less mixed with, with the desire for material gain. Advaita Acharya was uh, respected as a great Brahmin at that time, but in his mood as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he was also feeling very unhappy when he would see how people were wasting their lives simply trying to increase their material uh, mm -hmm. material gain through spiritual activities. And this is pretty common. Even today, we find people take up spiritual life for material gain. Uh, but spiritual life is about awakening our love for the Supreme Personality of Godhead, not using spiritual worship or various forms of spiritual worship in order to have better material facilities or to enjoy the material world in a better way. That's not the purpose of spirituality. That is, that is mixed devotional service. There is some devotion there, but because it's mixed, it doesn't satisfy the heart. So by Pum Sam Paro Dharma, Yato Bhakti Yahoksa that uh, when devotional service is free from personal motivation and it's offered continuously, then it satisfies the self. Only then. So Advaita Charya was feeling angry for what he was seeing. There was very few devotees and most people were worshiping various types of devas. It describes in the uh, Chaitanya Bhagavat what the atmosphere was in Navadvipa before the appearance of Lord Chaitanya. And Advaita Acharya became disgusted and, and it even says that he felt like taking out his chakra because he is the Supreme Lord and just killing everybody. But he understood that wasn't the solution. The solution was to uh, give people a chance by bringing about the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, to personally deliver all the living entities. So Advaita Acharya was very concerned. So he performed this worship he would go down to the banks of the Ganga at a certain place every day, set up an altar with shallow ground shilas, and with Ganga water, flowers, tulsi leaves, and sandalwood paste, he would chant mantras and call in a very loud voice for the Lord to appear. And then this worship went on. It says, therefore, it says one of the reasons why 
Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared wants to satisfy the request of Advaita Acharya. Because as we mentioned, he is also Sadashiva, and Sadash and Shiva is the compassionate nature. He's always concerned that the living entities are worshiping the Supreme Lord and making progress in that way. So Shiva is very compassionate and therefore he is exhibiting that compassion by wanting to bring the Supreme Lord down so he can perform activities which will uplift the conditioned souls. So that's described. And then of course it mentions that the Lord did come. He came not only for that reason, he came to perform his own inter internal pastimes of his mood of Radharani's worship for himself. And that is called the internal reasons, but the external reasons were because to satisfy Advaita Chari and to initiate the Yuga Dharma, the chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra as the means for self-realization in this age of Kali. And of course the Lord appeared and then there were many, many wonderful pastimes centered around that. Uh, one of the interesting features between Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Sri Advaita Charya is the Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu knew completely who Advaita Charya was, both being older and being the Supreme Lord himself, Lord Chaitanya always gave respects to Advaita Charya, which would cause Advaita Charya to become unhappy. He was always wanting to, sh to respect the Lord and not receive respect from the Mahaprabhu. And this was causing him great uh, anguish, thinking, I want to worship him. He will not accept any worship from me. He worships me as the Lord. How can I change that? And this is an interesting point because he's also teaching us, the conditioned souls, that the desire to serve and to worship is the highest form of expression that the living entity can attain to as opposed to the condition expression where people in general, especially in the material world, want to be worshiped. People want some prestige, some worship, some recognition, some glorification. And this is the nature of the conditioned soul and people will do various things in order to bring about that. But in spiritual life, which is real life, because the nature of the living entity is completely spiritual, the soul wants to serve and wants to glorify the Lord. And that is its ultimate success and that is its ultimate happiness. So Advaita Charya was also teaching that, that to serve and to worship is better than being worshiped and being served and more desirable. That's the word, more desirable. And so um, it's mentioned that one of Lord, uh, one of Advaita Acharya's assistants, whose name was Kamala, Kamala Kanta, <coughs> Kamala Kanta Vishwasa, <coughs> Kamala Kanta Vishwasa, he wrote a letter, not a letter, but a little note, notation. And in that notation, he wrote that Sri Advaita Charya is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but he also has a debt of 300 rupees to the King of Puri. Hmm. And so, when uh, that note got into the hands of Lord Chaitanya, he became very, very upset. And then he made this statement, who is this Kamala Kata Vishwasa? Who does he 
think he is, he is saying that Advaita Chari is the Supreme Lord, but he's also saying that the Supreme Lord is a debtor. This is contrary. The, the, the Supreme Lord is a de is no one's no one's debtor. And so Lord Chaitanya became upset and said, "I don't ever want to see a great uh, Kamala Kanta Vishwasu again." Of course, when the word got back to Kamala Kanta, he became very unhappy. But then again, we found that the Dwaita Chari also found out, and he immediately went to see. Lord Chaitanya, and he said to Lord Chaitanya, you've never showed me such mercy as you have showed to Kamala Kanta, my servant. How is that? What He has received your special mercy. And then of course it's explained that the Lord is absolute. And this is an important point to understand. Whether he chastises someone or he praises someone because he is absolute, there is no difference. <laughs> no difference in the sense that he works only or he acts only for the benefit of the living entity. So if he chastises someone, punishes someone, it's for their benefit. If he glorifies them, it's for their benefit. The results are the same. And therefore the Lord is absolute. <clears throat> because he doesn't have any personal interest in glorifying or, in, in, or punishing, but he does it as a service to that particular living entity. So when Advaita Charya saw that he, his servant got more recognition than he did, he spoke that to Lord Chaitanya. <laughs> and then Lord Chaitanya said, all right, well, Okay, and then he can come back and we will, he can be again in our association. But then Advaita Acharya was thinking, hmm, he's always giving, he never, he's always giving me respect and he never wants me to give him extra respect. He always avoids, avoids it. So I'm going to do something to get his attention, get his respect, uh, allow him to allow me to get, get some mercy. So he understood that Lord Chaitanya very much becomes upset when devotees go to other places to hear about the spiritual topics that are not pure devotional service. So Advaita started to go to hear talks on yoga vishishta. Yoga vishishta is basically about Smartism, impersonalism, Mayavadism. So then this went on for some time. And again, Lord Chaitanya found out <clears throat> and he became very thoughtful, thinking, what is it way to Charya doing? And then he remained quiet, but then he made a plan that he was going to correct the situation. And so him and Lord Nityananda, Lord Chaitanya said to Lord Nityananda, let us go to Shantipur and we will meet with Advaita Acharya. And Lord Nityananda said, fine. So they both went and they were traveling together and they followed the path along the banks of the Ganga. Because the Ganga connects uh, Navadweep with Shantipur. I think it's about 25 kilometers in distance. And uh, so as they were going, they passed a little hut. And Lord Chaitanya became curious and said to Lord Nityananda, well, who lives there? And Lord Nityananda said, I think there's a sannyasi who lives there. Oh, Lord Chaitanya said, I let's, let's go get his blessings. So they went in and there was an elderly person. He was there and he welcomed them and they sat down. And then Lord Chaitanya thought, well, here's a sannyasi. We should ask him some questions because it says when you get into the association with a certain person, you take that advantage by finding out uh, 
how you can gain in your practice of devotional service. It's not that when you meet a saintly person, you talk about mundane things or ordinary chit chat, you always present questions or concerns, or in other words, something that will be spiritually beneficial. So Lord Chaitanya said to the sannyasi, uh, what is the goal of life? And the sannyasi said, well, the goal of life is to be happy. And to be happy means that one should enjoy eating, drinking, and various types of activities as much as possible. And Lord Chaitanya became a little concerned. He said, no, actually the goal of life is to worship Krishna, Lord Sri Krishna in devotion. The sannyasi, so-called sannyasi, became offended and said, just see, here we are, us who are in knowledge, who are senior, and here comes these young children who are just coming from the womb of their mother and they're instructing us. <laughs> so then Lord Chaitanya started to respond and Lord Nityananda interrupted and said, well, actually, let's just have some some prasadam. And then the sannyasi said, well, yes, that is a good idea. Lord Chaitanya said, well, I'm, I'm actually fasting today, but please bring me some fruits. So the sannyasi went back into the other room and he came out with some foodstuffs. And then actually it's mentioned that he didn't bring it out, but his wife brought it out. <laughs> he wasn't a, he was a grihasta sannyasi, <laughs> which is, there's no such thing, of course. In other words, he was pretentious. <laughs> he wasn't a real sannyasi. And so his wife brought it out. And then Lord Chaitanya said, well, actually, you know, I'll just take a little. But then the sannyasi said, would you like some bliss? Bliss. Some happiness. And uh, Lord Nich Chaitanya looked at Lord Nityananda and said, what does he mean by bliss? Lord Nityananda said, he wants to know if you want some wine. <laughs> Lord Chaitanya looked at Lord Nityananda and said, let's go. So they both got up and ran out of the out of the place and then immediately with all their clothes on they jumped into the Ganga. They felt contaminated by that association. <clears throat> After some time they continued their their trek along the Ganga and finally they arrived at the house of Advaita Charya. Advaita Charya was there with his good wife Sita Takarani and Haridas Thakur was also there. Of course, we also know that <clears throat> it wasn't simply the prayers of Lord Ch uh, uh, Dwight Tachari that brought Lord Chaitanya. It was a combined effort between Haridas Thakur and, and Dwight Tachari. Haridas Thakur was intensely chanting the holy names of the Lord, the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, and praying at the same time for the Lord to descend. And of course, you know, Haridas, Thakur, Mukunda, Srivas, Thakur, Advaita Charya, they were all there before the appearance of Lord Chaitanya. There was a, only a small handful of devotees. And now, when Lord Chaitanya arrived, he stopped and stayed a distance away. And he was looking at Advaita, and his eyes started to fill up with anger. And then he immediately, full speed, he ran towards the Dwaita, came right up to him, and with his fists, he started beating the head of a Dwaita Jarya and start, what are you doing? I've come here to establish pure devotional service, and you're teaching this Mayavadi stuff. And he was beating him. And Advaita Chari was feeling so happy. Finally, I got the mercy of the Lord. 
He's showing me his ultimate compassion. And then while this is going on, Haridas Thakur, he's laughing. And Lord Nityananda is watching. And Sita Takarani, the wife of Advaita Charya, she's thinking, oh, my Lord, he's an old man. If you continue to beat him, you'll kill him. <laughs> but Lord Chaitanya didn't hear anything. He just continued to finally he stopped, came out of his mood of Rudra, anger. And he said, what are you doing, Advaita? Advaita said, now my life has become successful. I have received your special mercy. Thank you. Now I understand my position. And so this is what Advaita Charya went through in order to get the special mercy of Lord Chaitanya. He didn't want to be worshipped. He wanted to worship the Lord. Of course, there's another particular pastime where, where Lord Chaitanya, in order to benedict Advaita Charya, he revealed his form as the universal form, the same universal form that he revealed to uh, Arjun, as mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita. And it's a beautiful picture. Um, if we have any Chicago devotees out there, is there any Chicago devotees listening today? Yes, Hare Krishna. Well, um, you uh, maybe you remember on the wall of the Chicago temple, on the on the wall that's on the left side as you go in, you'll see this beautiful picture, Lord Chaitanya revealing the the universal form to. Advaita Acharya. It's one of the more rare photos, pictures that have been created in our society. So that's there in the Chicago Temple. That's, I'm sure it's in other places, but that's what I remembered from. So that was quite powerful. He got the special mercy of the Supreme Lord. <clears throat> So these are some of the pastimes of Advaita Acharya. There's much, much more. Um, I will read one series of prayers. This is called Sri Advaita 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 These are eight prayers composed by Sarvabhama Bhattacharya. And I'll read just the English translation. Let me surrender to Srila Advaita Charya, who with tulsi leaves, flowers, waters from the Ganga shore and loud calls of love, worship Lord Gore and beg him to appear. Let me surrender to Srila Advaita Charya, Attracted by his loud calls, the golden lord of Goloka Vrindavan was an ocean of ecstatic love and fear in Sri Navadweep. Let me surrender to Srila Advaita Acharya, who, by making the moon of Lord Chaitanya rise, flooded the world with love. Even Brahma and the great demigods can take, cannot attain. Let me surrender to Srila Advaita Charya, whose mercy is beyond understanding, and by whose request alone of the all powerful Lord Chaitanya disappeared from the world. Yeah, so it's mentioned that not only did the Lord, he called the Lord, but he, he, in a very coded statement, when it was time for the Lord to leave, he made a statement that no one could understand except Lord Chaitanya, and he wrote it down on a piece of paper. Uh, the people are now the people are now fully satisfied because in in, uh, in in the marketplace there is no more demand for rice. So in this message, he was basically saying, 
to the Lord, it's time to leave. No one could understand him but Lord Chaitanya. And Lord Chaitanya said, well, it is by his arrangement that I have come. And now he is asking me to go. And so it wasn't long after that that the Lord disappeared. Mm -hmm. Verse number five, let me surrender to Srila Dvaita Chari, who is non-different from the form of Lord Mahavishnu and whose parts and parcels of Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva engage in the creation, maintenance, and destruction of the worlds. Let me surrender to Srila Dvaita Chari, who is worshipped by all, who is attained only by devotional service, and who, as is heard in a certain Vedic literature, because he is Lord Shiva's shelter, has a name and glory like Lord Shiva's. Let me surrender to Sri Advaita Charya, who is flooded with love for Lord Chaitanya, and whose beloved wife Sita Devi and Sanda Chutananda are also filled with love. So Advaita Charya, this is just uh, my explanation, he had six children. One was a Chutananda, one was Krishna Das, one was Gopal. And these three out of the six follow their father and follow the process of pure devotional service, especially a Chutananda. He was glorified in so many ways for his devotion. Um, but Advaita had six other sons. One was called Jagadish, another one was called Balaram, and there was one more. And these three sons were labeled as Asara. Asara means, Sara means useful, Asara means useless. So these sons were compared to the urine of their father. In other words, they were rejected because they gave up the whole process of spiritual life, or actually never took it up, and simply became impersonalists and my bodies. And therefore, they were no longer connected to Lodwaita Charya. <clears throat> so it's interesting because um, although they were born in the family of the Supreme Lord and his eternal consort, consort Sita Thakurani, still they acted contrary. So this is an interesting little scenario because you see that sometimes parents will be very devotional and the children will be the opposite. And sometimes you see the parents are very demoniac and the children are very devotional. So although birth is an asset for a particular direction, in other words, birth has an, an influence, still we find that people don't always follow that influence and become something different. Just like we have the example of Prahlad Maharaj. Prahlad Maharaj's father was the greatest demon. <laughs> So sometimes we also understand from Shastra that children are born according to the karma that they have in their previous life and therefore their karma with their parents are similar. But why is that karma manifesting itself in a different way? Because there is another reason. And this is interesting that so sometimes the Lord will show special mercy to a particular set of parents who are not devotional by giving them a devotional child. And that way, those parents can take advantage and also become devotees like that. So that the Lord will do that sometimes. He'll allow for a particular child to be born in a particular family just to benefit that family. Just for example, Prahlad Maharaj in the family of Varani Kashipu, like that. And we see that in also in today's society where the children want to be devotees and the parents want them to become good worldly materialists. But still, because of that uh, 
fortunate child that they have, they make progress towards uh, becoming Krishna conscious. And the, the eighth verse, let me surrender to Lord Advaita Charya, whose heart is Lord Gore's eternal home, who is, known to, who is named Advaita because he is not different from Lord Nityananda and who is named Acharya because he teaches devotional service. There's a one beautiful pastime in the house of Advaita Acharya where Advaita Acharya and Lord Chaitanya, after he took sannyas, um, no, I think it was on his way, yeah, this is on his way to Vrindavan. The Lord actually thought he had arrived in Vrindavan, but Advaita Charya tricked him, and the Lord found himself in the area of Shantipur, the home of Advaita Charya. And the Lord was taking bath in what he thought was the Jamuna River, but actually it was the Ganga. And then after getting out, Advaita Charya came with a boat and some dry clothes. And Lord Chaitanya said, oh, Advaita, you're here in Vrindavan. And the Dwaita said, actually, this is not Rindavan, this is Shantipur. But then, of course, wherever you are, that is Rindavan. And we understand that the Jamuna flows in one direction and the Ganga flows in another direction in the area of Shantipur. So it says, yes. So Dwaita said, yes, you are actually are bathing in the Jamuna River because you are bathing on the western side, and that is the Jamuna side, and on the eastern side is the Ganga side. And so then uh, Advaita invited Lord Chaitanya to come to his home, and the Lord did, and he had cooked this huge feast. Lord Nityananda was also accompanying Lord Chaitanya on his travels. So he invited, he invited both lords to come, and uh, when Lord Chaitanya saw the feast, it was like hundreds of preparations. Well, he said, actually, today I am fasting, but you can give me some, a little bit of uh, shak, some vegetable, and that is sufficient. He said, I cannot eat more than that. And the Dwaita Charya said, in Jagannath Puri, they feed you 56 times a day with so many preparations. So for this, for this, what I have prepared for you is simply a small morsel, more morsel, morsel. So please take prashadam. So the Lord started to do that. And then he offered prashadam to Lord Nityananda. Lord Nityananda said to Advaita Charya, Advaita Charya, I've been fasting for three days and now I've come to your home and you're offering me prashadam, but this is not enough even to give a little satisfaction to my hunger. This is useless. <laughs> so there was a fight, uh, an kind of sweet, loving, intimate, hard to understand, better not to take anyone's side within this fight because it says, that they, they, they fought amongst themselves. And, and uh, Lord Nityananda, when he was offered the rice, he picked the rice up and he threw it on the ground. And some of the, some of the rice kernels bounced and hit Lord Advaita Charya on his leg and stuck to his leg. And Advaita Charya started to dance in ecstasy, being hit by the thrown rice of Lord Nityananda. And then, <clears throat> Lord Dwaita said, you should eat. And he said, you are simply a bogus. You are simply a, a, an attached householder. And then Dwaita Charya said, you're, 
we were a reject Paramahansa. <laughs> so they were arguing, but it, they're arguing and it looked like they were disagreeing with each other. But for those of you who read this pastime, the, the Acharyas give a caution that don't take anyone's side in this pastime because it's a loving exchange between, between two exalted personalities and no one can really understand what is actually going on. And that's also instructive. Sometimes we may uh, try to judge what is happening with great souls, but a lot of times it's simply our mental speculation and that can cause us to commit offenses. That's why it says one should not find fault with great souls. Even if there is an apparent fault, it shouldn't be seen in that way. <laughs> And of course, later on, Lord Chaitanya honored the feast and then he stayed there for three months. After three months, he decided to leave. And when he was leaving, Advaita Charya followed him and said, no, you cannot leave. And though he, the Lord came back and stayed for an extra week at the house of Advaita Charya. And every day, as is described in that particular section of the Chaitanya Charitamrita in chapter 13, I believe it is, it describes that throughout the whole day, they would simply discuss philosophical teachings of the tattva and lila of Lord Krishna and Vrindavan. And in the evening time, they would perform kirtan for many, many hours. And Prabhupada also writes in one purport that we should adopt this in each and every one of our temples. Every one of our temples, around the world should adopt through having three hours of Harinam Sankirtan, Kirtan within the temples. And he wrote that in this purport describing this particular pastime. So that went on the time when Lord Chaitanya there. Oh, they were always discussing Lord Krishna's pastimes and all uh, either that or having kirtan or honoring nice prasadam. That's Lord Chaitanya's sweet manifestation of pure devotional service. Chant, dance, and have nice Krishna prasadam and simply repeat the classes continuously. Okay, so we'll stop there, knowing that our time is limited. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances always to Srila Prabhupada and Guru, and your holiness. Uh, Guru Maharaj, Anjali Mataji has to go. She has a, uh, got an urgent call from office and uh, she conveyed her apologies to you, Guru Maharaj. Okay, thank you, Lavanya. So... Um, um, what is there any questions or comments, uh, realizations? You can go ahead. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Yeah. Janava Mataji has a question, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances. Always to Srila Prabhupada. Guru Maharaj, thank you for the lecture. There are many tattvas, and sometimes their positions are original. Um, Advaita Acharya Mahavishnu and Sadashiva who arise from Sankarshana is Advaita a mix of Shiva and Vishnu Tattva like milk and yogurt placed on the Vishnu platform. Yogurt however can never become milk like cause and effect. Thank you. Um, well that mixture that analogy doesn't apply to this combination. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that's that analogy of, of yogurt and milk is simply to give you an understanding of how Shiva is identical with and different from uh, Krishna <laughs> or Vishnu, actually Vishnu. That's the reason for that analogy and that analogy is explained in the Brahma Samhita. So, because people say, well, you know, Shiva, but Shiva, Krishna takes the part of Shiva in order to perform the activity of destruction, takes the part of Lord Brahma in order to take the 
to in order to facilitate creation. And he takes the part of Vishnu, who remains in his his position as Vishnu, in order to maintain the material energy, to maintain the material worlds. So um, they are different and they are non-different at the same time. Chintya, beta beta, that In Navadvip Dam, there is one place, Hare Hara, Hari Hari, Hari. What is the name of that deity in uh, Navadvip? Hari Hara. Who knows that deity? It's it's half Shiva and half Vishnu. It is Hari Har, Hari Har, I think Hari Har. Hari Harai. Hari Har. Hara, yeah, that's it. Hari Hara. He is half black and half white, divided in right down the middle. One side is white, that's the Shiva side. The other side is dark, that is the Vishnu side. Like that. Interesting deity. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, Guru Maharaj, I have a question. Um, so we were reading in our uh, Chaitanya Chirtamrita uh, class um, in the glories of Sri Advaita Acharya. And at the end of the chapter, I just want to share my screen, Guru Maharaj. So in that uh, 110 verse, so where um, Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami is explaining about uh, the descendant, um, how Lord Chaitanya came onto this world to give the holy name. So in this verse, Guru Maharaj, uh, one second. See, it, this is 6.110, like 110. Um, so we didn't understand this point in the purport, Guru Maharaj. So for the, as, as per the translation, he tastes his own sweetness through the various emotions of a devotee. Mm -hmm. I have formerly explained this conclusion. So, but in purport, Lord Chaitanya, who is known as Sri Gaurahari, is complete in relishing all the different mellows, namely neutrality, servitorship, fraternity, paternal, parental affection, and conjugal love. By accepting the ecstasy of different grades of devotees, he is complete in relishing all the mellows of these relationships. So uh, we couldn't understand um, how Lord Chaitanya is manifesting in all these uh, different types of rasas, like neutrality, servitorship, uh, fraternity, all that. Well, if you go through the pastimes, you'll find that these he has relationships with his devotees in these different mellows. They're there, just like with uh, Jagananda Pandit, he's in the conjugal relationship with, um, what is it, uh, with, uh, I think, uh, what's his name? Not mm. Sarvabhum Bhattacharya, but Ramananda uh, uh, Roy, he is also, he is in the, I think, in a friendship relationship. So the Lord, ex, now he, this is interesting because it's quite hard to understand this. In fact, it's very difficult. He's in the mood of Radharani. So he is expressing his love for Krishna in her mood, but at the same time in his mood as Krishna, he's, he's interacting with his devotees in these different Rasas. So, does that answer your question? Yes, good match. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. Yeah. He's he's exchanging with his devotees in these different these different uh, different rasas like that. Yeah, we were trying to relate um, the persons uh, in that leela um, with these uh, aspects, Guru Maharaj, like. Uh, who is for neutrality, servitorship, fraternity, like that. So neutrality, we couldn't understand much uh, about it, Guru Maharaj. Neutrality means... Uh, yeah, we'd have to do some research. 
but in um, you know parental affection he, he became the son of Sachi Mata yeah. <laughs> in Jagannath Mishra okay. he developed friendships with some devotees um, neutrality Neutrality is understood in two ways. One is love without service. That is, that is by not serving, actively serving, one is sh showing love towards the object. For instance, when you take darshan of the deities in the temple, and you're there and you're admiring the beauty of the deity, you're admiring the glory of the deity's presence. That is the mood of neutrality. Admiration without active service. And then, of course, for the apparent objects that are not animate, such as trees, rocks, the earth, water they serve the lord in neutrality also so uh, but then again on another level the neutral rasa is also there for the impersonalists the impersonalists don't serve the lord but they have an admiration for the lord as being the lord so that's their connection with the Lord is neutrality. So you might say, Prakasananda um, Saraswati, who Lord Chaitanya converted, uh, before his conversion, there was a connection with the Lord, but there was no active service. Mm -hmm. So you'd have to do, you do a little, you know, survey through the scriptures to see how the Lord interacted with different devotees. Yeah, maybe in further readings, um, it will be uh, there, Guru Maharaj. Yeah. You're mostly interested with neutrality. Is that the question? Yes, Nirmaraj. Yeah, because the uh, remaining things, servitorship, fraternity, we could understand uh, through the devotees, as you mentioned, the names like Ramananda Raj, Jagannath, and all that. But neutrality, we were wondering, like, who will be that, um, like, who is serving in that in that mood? Um, well, there's people who saw Lord Chaitanya who were attracted to him, but never offered any service. Mm -hmm. That's that's neutrality. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Now it's make clear. Yeah. 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 Prabhu has raised his hand. Prabhuji, you can go ahead. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, I have two questions. One, like uh, in Panchatattva, like, uh, of course, the Adyata Acharya has a very special significance. And I feel that when we are chanting uh, holy name, uh, especially Japa, then at that time should we meditate uh, that the way Adyata Acharya prayed Lord Chaitanya to appear for several years. Similarly, like in our through our Japa, we can have that mercy in our heart from uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Should that be the meditation or is, is that the... You're asking the Lord to come? <laughs> His mercy to come so I can like do more and more yeah. service. And, yeah. yeah, that's nice. That's the, the, the chanting of the holy name is calling to the Lord in devotion to please come and sit on my heart. Yeah. And Bhakti Vinod Thakur gives the understanding. He says that when you're chanting Hare Krishna, you're asking the Lord for service. Yeah. 
yes yes guru maharaj thank you i have second question guru maharaj like whenever adwaita acharya is mentioned it's always uh, like most of the time it's mentioned husband of sita devi not like we mentioned with like for shiva sir thakur or anybody uh, he was also like like his wife uh, malli mata ji was so like close to chaitanya mahaprabhu so is there any significance for sita devi like like as a devotee we should be think about that like some special like sita thakur rani yes guru maharaj uh well this what is the question so like in when we are addressing anybody uh, any other uh, acharya normally they are not addressed by their uh, wife like husband that in for uh, adwaita acharya it's always mentioned as husband of sita devi even in the adwaita ashtakam even in that uh, shri krishna chaitanya daya karo moro more in that also yeah. it's mentioned like husband of sita devi so is there any significance of like why like he only is mentioned in most of the prayers as just husband of sita devi mata ji <laughs> well he's mentioned in other ways too <laughs> not only that way it's just a way to glorify him it's just a way to glorify his wife that's all when you connect someone with someone else who is great that's one way of glorifying when you connect the moon to this when you connect the sky to the moon the sky becomes glorious when you connect a one person to another person who is glorious they both become glorious it's just a form of it's just a form of praise that's all sure thanks guru maharaj thank you yeah sita takarani is not an ordinary personality obviously she's one of the energies of the lord to manifest herself in that form thank you guru maharaj hari krishna humble obeisance to guru maharaj all glories to shila prabhupad all glories to your holiness i'm asking a question on behalf of diptesh prabhu who has requested me to ask you he says his boss is calling him and he has to leave he offers his humble obeisances please can you ask a question on my behalf and the question is why is advaita charya called advaita since the meaning of advaita is both soul and super soul are one this is the philosophy of shankara charya so why was he named advaita is there any significance for this thank you advaita means non dual one he is the one supreme lord advaita advaita Advaita, yeah, there's one verse in the uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita. He is called Advaita because he is non-dual, and he's called Acharya because he teaches by example. He's not. He is that one supreme personality of Godhead. Uh, it's in the Chaitanya Charitamrita somewhere. where his name is mentioned it might be mentioned in uh, the same chapter maybe at the beginning of the chapter in chapter number 6 if you can find the verse it just says clearly he's called the dwaita because he is nandu Okay, I will convey that to him, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. Best of you to research the verse. The the verse goes, he is known as a dwaita because he is non-dual. He is known as a charya because he is he teaches 
by example. If you can find that verse, that's the essence of the whole verse. Mm -hmm. I look at it, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Archana City, you have a question. <clears throat> yes, Guru Maharaj, Hare Krishna. Uh, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, Guru Maharaj, I liked all the pastimes. Um, and um, um, the pastime that you told about Advaita Acharya um, having um, uh, six sons, some of them were devotees, uh, Vaishnavas, and some were Mayavadis. Um, I'm just, uh, I have heard this a tiny bit here and there. So, uh, did Advaita Acharya? Um, uh, uh, say that uh, you know the Mayavadi children are no more my children like they uh, he did not consider them as children anymore is, is um, that... the, ter the terminology used to describe them is called Asara Sara means useful and Asara means useless so they are described as useless sons of Advaita we don't hear anything about them. It's just mentioned. Um, Prabhupada gets into it and he uses that as a comparison to what happened in the Gaudiya Math when the Gaudiya Math didn't follow Lord uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. They became Asara. And then he uses that uh, the, the pastime or the family of Advaita to kind of explain what it means to be Asara that they had the opportunity, but they went the other way. So, um, if you go and you, you do a little, it's in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, somewhere I think at the beginning in the Avi Leela, there is some mention of the sons, but uh, they, they, were, they were pretty much rejected by their father. Hmm. <clears throat> so, Guru Maharaj, how do we, uh, like, can we connect this to our lives where, you know, sometimes we have family members who are very materialistic, um, who don't understand us, maybe we changed, our thoughts and ideas changed because of coming to Krishna consciousness, and uh, we can no more relate to them, they have become um, estranged to us, H How how should we think about that well <laughs> you should think well if i can do something to help them good if i can better to avoid that association family members are given to us by simply by the collective karma of the living entities involved we don't choose our family members we choose our husband we choose our wife, but we don't choose anything else by spending the, rel the relatives that come from the husband's side, the, wife, the relatives that come from the wife's side, all their sons, daughters, uncles, aunts, cousins, nephews. They're all thrown at us as, you know, part of the whole package. <laughs> when you get married, you get all these other living entities coming in with you, and some of them are your own siblings or your own family members that you've been grown up with. And so it's all part of the material arrangement due to karma, collective karma manifestations, manifesting in a certain way. So our real family is the spiritual family. That's the real family. You know, even you know, Prabhupada was in Vrindavan after he had left everything. He left his business, he left his family, everything. And he was reflecting, he, and he was remembering all his family members. And he said, just a useless lot. Just created, just like clouds come into the sky at a certain time. And then after some time, the wind blows the clouds away and the clouds are no longer present. So we come in contact with our family members for a certain sojourn in a particular time period in our life, and then they, we move on. So we don't really put much uh, 
faith in that kind of relationship because if they can come up, we, if we can bring them towards Krishna, because that's the goal of life. It's not that we're better than them, but they don't know the goal of life. The goal of life is to love and serve the Lord, and that is the purpose of human life. They haven't understood that. If we have an opportunity, then we should take some opportunity to try to enlighten them in that way, in different ways. We can present different ways to try to change them or make them more favorable. If they're favorable, that's fine. Even if they're not actively engaged in devotional service, if they're favorable, that's good. Because by their favorability, that will lead them to you know, grow in their spiritual life in, in many ways. But if they are, you know, if they take issue or find fault with us because of our lifestyle, then we just avoid that 100%. Association should always be uh, in a favorable way and not in an unfavorable one. If you know it's going to be unfavorable, you avoid it. Mm. <clears throat> I don't know, if you want to do something for them, you could pray for them. <laughs> and those prayers may have effect because in one sense, because they're connected to you in one, in one way through family relationships, they are getting some benefit. Anyone who performs devotional service, everyone connected with them for many generations also gets benefit. So even though you, may, you might not ever see them or talk to them, still they're getting benefit as you grow in your spiritual life. And if you become a pure devotee, then they automatically receive liberation. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. Yeah, this family thing can really become a mind, cause a lot of difficulties within the mind. <laughs> Krishna consciousness or devotional service is the goal of life and one who takes it up should understand that, that they have been fortunate and now they, they should increase and increase their good fortune by, by becoming more and more advanced. Mm. You found the verse, Sri Devi, good. Thank you, Archana. Does that help? Yes, Guru Maharaj. It helps very much. Thank you. Yeah, what can we do? We find ourselves in these situations. Guru Maharaj, I have a question uh, piggybacking on what Archana Devi just asked. If I can just uh, go ahead and ask this question. Of course, we have heard from you several times that we must try our level best to help them and come closer to Krishna. But sometimes there comes a point when you're so frustrated, you get so fed up, you say the same thing over and over and over and over again. And still they don't get it, you know? They just don't get it. So it's not like you want to break off because there's nothing major happening, but it's not like you're making much headway either. So how we should go on in such situations? <laughs> I remember just remembering a lecture Prabhupada met. Prabhupada said, we are speaking, and but your ears are plugged. <laughs> and then you say to us, yes, you can speak, but we are not listening. <laughs> so everyone has their independence. If they're fortunate, They'll take advantage. If they're unfortunate, they won't. And so why waste your time? There are many people who are more receptive to what we have to offer. There's where we should put our time and energy. Family life is, you know, it's just thrown together by a series of Karma, that's all. 
you get connected with this person because of some similar karma. That's what... <laughs> Krishna is our father, the spiritual man. Krishna is our grandfather, the spiritual master is our father. And all the devotees are our brothers and sisters. That's the real family. Yes, Guru Maharaj, I think building relationships within our God family and strengthening our uh, devotee community is really key for our breaking away from unproductive, draining, depleting relationships. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You, that's the point. Build your relationships with devotees and then you won't be so much you know, unhappy about the these relationships that have come by way of, you know, uh, material ties. The most suffering that people experience is, usually comes from people who are close to you usually family relations. That's, that's where the most suffering comes. That's a fact. Uh, devotees, any other questions or comments? Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Lavanya. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Namrata. Yeah. Uh, uh, Pranam. Uh, I just wanted to add to uh, Arjuna Mataji and Sri Devi Mataji. It's just the realization what I have felt in all these days uh, uh, when I started with uh, Krishna consciousness that uh, we do try to uh, engage our family members. Sometimes, like in my family, uh, there are a lot of people who are engaged in spiritual life, but in their own mindset in a different ways. Like uh, some are with Brahma Kumari, some are with uh, uh, Swami Narayan people, with their own consciousness. But what I personally felt uh, after uh, reading Prabhupada books and uh, you know certain lectures and all uh, and chanting after chanting, uh, I felt that only if there is a mercy from them, from uh, apart from Krishna also and from our Guru, maybe Srila Prabhupada, if there is a mercy from them only, then you can you know get. Uh, elevated or you know, get get yeah. that get that glint also you know uh, to move ahead to choose a direction. Yeah, uh, people want to move ahead. The, they require some some mercy. Because there's a lot of uh, this is just my uh, you know analysis. There are a lot of tamogun and rajogun around us. So maybe people are not able to unfold what is right and what is wrong. They just, uh, you know, just get uh, baffled in this. Uh, this uh, sampradaya has done uh, this this much false. They have come up with this much scams and all that things. But up to certain level, they just make a opinion about them they don't try to get into what is what they want to do and if if they give one step ahead maybe you know the mercy may come uh-huh yeah that one step is if you can somehow get them the chance 
because if they have some spiritual inclination, they might be open to chanting. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. That, that's what I just wanted to share. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. Okay. So, all right. So we'll move on and uh, finish our session with um, Japa. Tomorrow is Bishmastami. It's the appearance day or the glorification day. Not the appearance day, but it's the, um, I might say it's the day we honor Grandfather Bhishma Dave. So that will be with the devotees in Charlotte. Okay, so we can begin our chanting of Harinam. Jai Sri Krishna, Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Srivasari Gaur Bhaktivindam, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Ram, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Ram, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna. Hari Ram, Ram Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Ram, Hari Hari. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Ram, Hari Hari. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari Hari Krishna Hari Krishna Krishna Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari Hari Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna. Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Hari Rama Hari Rama Rama Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari 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 Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari 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 Krishna, Hari Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Hari 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 Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari 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 Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna. Hari Hari. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama. Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna. Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna. Hari Hari. Hari Krishna. Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama.
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna. Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari 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 Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Hari Hari. Rama Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Hari Hari. Rama Hari is the Hari Krishna. Hari Rama, Hari 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 Rama, Rama Rama. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Hari. Hari 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 Ram Hari Ram Ram Hari Krishna Hari Krishna Hari 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 Ram Hari Ram 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna Hari Krishna Krishna Hari 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 Ram Hari Ram 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 Hari Hari Sir Prabhu Khan Ki Jai Kaur Bhai Hari Hari Bo Thank you very much. We have to go. We'll see you all soon. Have a good day. Keep healthy. Get a lot of exercise. And for those of you who are early day, it's fasting till noon. And those of you who are later day, have nice prashad. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hey, Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna.